Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready for a simple example of how to calculate the action. So let's say that we have a small object with a mass of one kilogram that's on the ground and it's starting upward with an initial velocity of 9.8 meters per second. That means that after one second it will reach a maximum height where the velocity will be equal to zero when it reaches a height of 4.9 meters. We assume under the action of gravity that the path of least action since it started in a vertical direction will be in a vertical point until it reaches a point 4.9 meters higher than where it started. Notice the initial kinetic energy will be one half m times initial velocity squared. The initial potential energy will be equal to zero because it starts on the ground. The final kinetic energy will be zero when it reaches that point and the final potential energy will be mgh, h being the final height. And so you can see that the straight line is assumed to be the path of least action. And then we have an alternate path, which will presumably, well, will have a greater action because it will require a greater velocity, greater kinetic energy in order to go from here to there in the same amount of time taking a, taking a longer path. And the average potential energy will be about the same. And so therefore you'll have a greater difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy. Now to get a little bit of a feel here, we put a few diagrams, one that shows you the potential energy as a function of time, and one that shows you the kinetic energy as a function of time. Notice that the potential energy starts at zero, and very quickly goes to its maximum height. You can see that the curve kind of curves off, because you know that the initial velocity is, is large, the final velocity is small, so you can see that the potential energy gains a lot initially, and less at the end of the first second. The kinetic energy is in reverse. It'll start losing a lot of kinetic energy quickly and then lose the kinetic energy slowly at the end because the velocity will decrease quickly. Well, the kinetic energy is a function of velocity squared. And of course, as the velocity decreases, velocity squared will decrease much faster and you'll get a decreasing kinetic energy like this. Notice that the average potential energy in this case will be greater than the average kinetic energy over time. So now also what we need to know is we need to use the equation of kinematics to find the height as a function of time and the velocity as a function of time. So using the equation y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught t minus one half gt squared. I put a minus there because I want g to be a positive 9.8. It means it's a little bit easier to work with. And so then, since we don't have an initial height, the height as a function of time simply becomes equal to this. The velocity as a function of time becomes equal to the initial velocity minus g times t. Notice again, g is a positive 9.8. After one second, the initial velocity at 9.8 minus 9.8 times 1 goes to 0, which means it has zero velocity at the highest point. So you can quickly check that those equations do work. Now, the potential energy as a function of time is equal to mgh. Now the height will be simply be replaced by this equation right here. So it's mg times what we have over here, which will be the height as a function of time. When time is equal to zero, the height is zero. When time is equal to one, the height will be 4.9. You can check that out real quickly. The kinetic energy as a function of time will be one half mv squared. Instead of v, we put in this equation right here. So we have v initial minus gt. We have to square that. So we get this value right here, or this equation right there, for the kinetic energy as a function of time. Then remember that the action can be calculated by the integral over time for the kinetic energy as a function of time minus the potential energy as a function of time. And that's exactly what we're going to do since the kinetic energy is defined over here and the potential energy is defined over here. We can plug those equations in. And so the action then will be one half mass times the velocity squared. We have integrated over the velocity squared because that's the portion that's a function of time minus mg times the height as a function of time. So we're integrating over velocity squared and the height as a function of time for the kinetic and the potential energies. When we integrate, notice we get v initial squared times t. Here we get t squared over two and t cubed over three. Over here, we get t squared over two and t cubed over three when we integrate. And then we evaluate from zero to one from zero to one because the whole trip will take just exactly one second. Obviously, I've taken some nice 
easy numbers where the mass is equal to one kilogram, time is equal to one, to make it easier to go to the integration. So now let's plug in the values. Mass is one, V initial would be 9.8, V initial 9.8, and G will be also 9.8. Uh, notice, let's see here, yes, notice that the time, of course, will be replaced by 1, and if we plug in the lower limit, we get 0, so we don't have to worry about the lower limit. Same over here, G is 9.8, mass is 1, V initial is 9.8, G is 9.8, time, of course, is 1, and of course, 2 times 3 will give you a 6 in the denominator, there will be 2 in the denominator there, so you can quickly work through all that. When we simplify the numbers, notice that S will be equal to the to the, uh, uh, that will be the integral of the energy over time, that will be 16 joules of kinetic energy minus the difference of these two will be 32 joules of, of, um, of potential energy, and of course the difference between them will be a minus 16 joules. Remember that the action must be a minimum, and the minimum in this case would be minus 16 joules. Now, Actually, to be strictly speaking, it would be joules times time, of course. I have to also well, have to multiply times seconds, and I have to take the whole thing and multiply times seconds, and it'll be joules times seconds to be perfectly accurate. Remember, because what we did here is we integrated over time, so when we plug in the time, we plug in the seconds, so we have to take that into account. So, uh, what we're saying here is that the Minimum action with the past of least action will be equal to minus 16. Now we're going to show you later that if we take any other path, the result of that integral will be greater than minus 16, and therefore that will not be the path taken by the object. Now in this particular case, it's a little bit harder to see. We're going to do some other examples where it'll be easier to see, but again, the concept is when you do the integral, and you're on the path of, of least action, you'll get the smallest value with that integral. Any other path taken, you'll get a bigger number, and I'll show you some examples of what that looks like in the next several videos. And that is how it's done.